in this problem, we're going to go through and solve for the gravitational potential energy of this, this 10 kilogram block, which is sitting two meters above the floor. And so we're going to use our equation for gravitational potential energy, which we derived here. And that equation is gravitational potential energy. Whether you use U with a little G next to it, sometimes you'll see people use potential energy with a little G next to it, or sometimes you'll see people use G, P, E, whatever floats your boat, uh, that's cool, I, I don't care. But this, regardless of how you express this, it's going to be M, G, H, where M is the mass of the block, G is the acceleration due to gravity, and H is the height of the object. So in this case, we're gonna assume this block is on Earth because, well, it's an Earth block. We don't wanna put it in space quite yet. So we're gonna use this equation and solve for the gravitational potential energy. Easy enough. So, the gravitational potential energy is going to be 10 times 9.8 times the height, that's two. And we get the gravitational potential energy is 196 joules. Awesome, we're done, right? It's a two minute video. No, no, we're, we're not done. And here's the issue with this. What we've done in this problem is we've gone through and we've said that the ground was a, a height of zero, or a, a position of zero, and we're measuring the potential energy of this block relative to this. Well, let's say this is a floor in your house. Well, really, where is a height of zero? Is, is this the, the floor on the first level? Is this the floor in the basement? Is your house up at elevation on the top of a mountain or something like that? Uh, and so we get into this real situation where we have to consider where is our height that we're measuring everything relative to. Perhaps I wanna say in our little house here, some height down here is a height of zero. And so this, this is not to scale. Let's say this is four meters between this floor and where I'm actually gonna say a height of zero is located. Well, that would change the actual potential energy because in this case right here, we would see that the gravitational potential energy is equal to the mass, that's 10, times the g, that's 9.8, times the height, that is the difference in height between the block and where we're saying is a, a height of zero. So in this case, it'd be two plus four, that's six, which is going to give us a potential energy of 588 joules. We could make this even stranger. Let's go and take a look at the ceiling or the roof right here. Let's say we said the roof was a height of zero, and I know that seems strange, but let's say this roof was a height of zero. Well, there would still be some gravitational potential energy relative to this point. So the gravitational potential energy relative to this height right here would be 10 times 9.8 times the height. Now let's go through and let's say there's one meter between the ceiling and the block. So the height in this case is going to be negative one. Why negative one? Well, because we're saying up is positive. Realize we've been doing that the whole time. We've been saying if the block was above the floor, it had some positive height. Well, this time the block is below the floor, so it has some effective negative height. So in this case, we're gonna find the gravitational potential energy is negative 98 joules. Well, and this presents an issue because we found the gravitational potential was 196, then we found it was 588, then we found it was negative 98. The fact of the matter is I could go through and actually choose any height that I want to be a value of zero and, and get nearly any value I wanted for potential energy. So the question comes up, what's the right answer? Well, they're all the right answer. Now that doesn't mean in a problem you can just put in any number you want for gravitational potential energy. But I want you to realize gravitational potential energy is always relative to a position. So it's important when you're talking about gravitational potential energy to understand what position we're measuring everything relative to or what height we're measuring things relative to because that affects the outcome. Now this brings up the next and stranger question and that is, well, how much energy is there truly in nature because of this? Uh, how much, what's the actual amount of gravitational potential energy? And I want you to not think of energy as being coins in a bank or anything like that. I wanna go back to our original definition of, of energy and that was simply the result of work. If I put this block two meters above the floor, gravity can do a certain amount of work relative to this height of the floor. 
Uh, if I change where that height is or that reference height, I'm changing how much work I can allow gravity to do if I was to drop this block. Uh, in saying this block is below this ceiling here, I'm saying gravity's already done that work. So really don't think of gravitational potential energy as being some, some absolute value where there's actual tiny little energy coins stored in the bank of space. It's just the result of work that could or has already been done. And on that abstract note, that's all for now.